Hey folks, uh, this lesson is uh, independent and dependent variables. These are just equations that we're going to set up. So here's our, our common core strand for our teachers and represent and analyze quantitative relationships between dependent and independent variables. And what does that mean? Well, well, our question here is how can we write equations, that's our main priority here, and represent the relationships between what is called an independent and a dependent variable. Don't forget all your Groovy lessons can be found at that awesome website. Just make sure you click uh, sixth grade math. There's two sixth grade math lessons up there. One stands for California and one's for uh, the rest of the country. California's kind of weird. Anyway, so let's uh, let's go ahead and here's an equation here. So given b equals two point or twenty five point seven plus x, what is the value when b is twelve point eight? So we just substitute in twelve point eight. So 12.8, we're going to plug right there, and we're going to add these together. So I did that over here. So make sure you line up the decimals. So we'll put a decimal right down here, and 8 plus 7 is 15, carry the 1. And then we just keep adding right there, so we get uh, 38.5 right there, okay? All right, how about this one? Given uh, R equals 3.1U plus 2.56, what's the value of r when we use u equals 7? So we're going to plug in u equals 7 right there, which means multiply. Okay, so now we just follow the order of operations uh, to do multiplication first, and then we'll add those results afterwards. And don't forget that we need to line up those decimals. So here we go, multiply. Okay, so 7 times 1 is 7, no carry, and then so 7 times 3 is 21, and then move the decimal over one place because there's one place right there. So 21.7 is going to be replaced right here, and then we add those guys, okay? And uh, remember, we have to line up the decimals, so 21.7 and then 2.56. Okay, remember the decimals have to line up. So you can pretend like there's a zero right there, and then zero plus six, and then just add straight down. Okay, so we don't have to carry until here. Seven plus five is twelve, so carry the one. So one plus one plus two is four. Anyways, we get uh, 24.26, okay? So when we use an equation with two variables to represent a relationship between two quantities, uh, there's always one one or two of them that are unknown. So one variable is called the independent variable, and the other one is called the dependent variable. So the, the value of the independent variable determines the value of the dependent variable. And I know what you're thinking. What does that mean? Well, for example, in the in the last equation that we did, B uh, was dependent on what we plugged in for X right there. So this was the dependent variable, and that means X is the independent variable, okay? So typically, you guys, um, the number that we plug in is our independent variable, and that makes the other variable your dependent variable. Okay, so here we go. So Julia burns 5.8 calories for every minute she jogs. So identify the independent and dependent variables in this situation, and then we'll write an equation to represent the, uh, the relationship between the number of minutes Julia jogs and the total number of calories she burns. Okay, so why do, um, uh, do we need to use variables? Okay, well, uh, we, there's a couple of unknowns in this one, so it's going to represent our unknown valuables or unknown values. So how many variables are needed in this situation? Okay, well, there's two variables, one for the number of calories, and then one for uh, the number of minutes that we're doing, okay? All right, so let's identify the independent and dependent variables, and then we'll use variables to write an equation. So C will represent the total number of calories that uh, Julia burns, and M represents the number of minutes she's going to jog. So let's go ahead and write an equation. So think the total number of calories Julia burns depends on how long she jogs, so how many minutes she jogs. So, so um, uh, the calories, which is going to be our C, is going to be our dependent because it depends on how many minutes M uh, the independent variable is, okay? So let's write an equation to represent this situation, okay? So the total calories burned is equal to 5.8, because that's what it says right here, 5.8 times the number of minutes she jogs, okay? So here we go. So the calories burned, we're going to represent that as C is equal to 5.8 times M, the number of minutes right there, okay? All right, so the equation is, it's right here, C equals 5.8 times M, or just 5.8 M right there. Okay, so it represents uh, the number of calories Julia burns 
if she jogs m minutes, where c is the dependent variable and m is the independent variable, okay? All right, so explain how we know uh, that the value of c is the dependent and, uh, uh, on the value of m, okay? Well, the variable c represents the number of calories she burns. So the variable m is the number of minutes she jogs. So, so c is dependent on m because the number of calories she burns totally depends on how long she is going to run, okay? All right, here's another one. So John is going bowling with his friends. Each game he plays costs $3.25. And there's a one-time shoe rental fee of 250. Okay, so 250 won't change, but the number of games will change. So it's 325 per game right there. Okay, so identify the independent and dependent variables in this situation, and then we'll write an equation to represent the relationship between the number of games and the total cost. Okay, so so here the total cost of in dollars C will represent that as C for cost depends on the number of games that John plays. Remember, it's the number of games times this, and then he gets a one-time uh, shoe rental fee right there. So which one's dependent? Okay, well, well the 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 C the cost is dependent on how many games he plays. So C is dependent and uh, G is going to be independent. Okay, the independent is what we plug in to see what the total total cost is right there. Okay, and just be careful, you guys. The fee of the shoes is just a one-time fee, and so it's not multiplied by the number of games. He just pays the 250. So the total cost is the cost of the game times the number of games and then plus that shoe rental at the end, okay? So the total cost is C and then uh, times the number of games, which is G, and then plus the shoe rental fee of 250 right there. So there's our equation right there. So the equation becomes C equals 3.25 times G, which is G is the number of games, plus the 250 rental fee represents the cost in dollars C that John spends if he bowls G games where where C is the dependent and G is the independent okay all right looks like I spelled something wrong back there did I did I spell my sometimes I get my fingers get typing I guess not anyway uh, so uh, so there's our equation now we'll use that equation to find the total cost that John uh, will uh, if he plays uh, three games so we're going to find the value of C right here the cost is 3.25 times G plus the 250 rental okay so we'll go ahead and substitute in 3 multiply that out follow the order of operations so 3.25 times 3 I did that over here 3 times 5 is 15, carry the 1, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, 3 times 3 is 9, 2 decimals over, so 9.75, and then we add those up. Don't forget, we got to line up those decimals, so it will cost John $12.25 to play three games, okay? All right, so hey, what if there was no fee for the shoe rental fee? So how would that equation be different? Well, we just take off that 250, so the equation would just be C equals 3.25 times G. How can we use that estimate to, to check our answer is reasonable? Okay, well, well let's go with the, the original cost. So the cost of the game, since it's uh, um, uh, $3.25, we'll round that down to $3. So if John plays three games, the cost will be about $9, a little bit more. And the cost of the shoes is about $3. Well, 250 is the cost of the shoes, so that rounds to $3. So the total cost would be 9 plus 3, which is 12 and since twelve dollars is is close to our estimate of twelve twenty five then we know our answer is reasonable right there okay all right you guys i hope that makes sense and take care